Hello and welcome to KitHub's STEAM Professional Development for Educators video series. We're really excited to share our insights and expertise with you. This video is how to get started with STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And today you are joined by myself, Tara Tiger-Brown, uh, co-founder of KitHub and founder of the nonprofit Los Angeles Makerspace. I'm Luz Rivas, co-founder of KitHub, also founder of DIY Girls. And I'm Rebecca Wilkins, an education specialist at KitHub and a former classroom teacher. Um, so uh, lots of educators contact us of how they can get started with STEAM. And we usually reply to keep it simple. And, and there, here are a few tips um, to get you started. Uh, make sure your project goals are clear. Um, you don't have to be an expert in STEAM um, to create STEAM projects. And that's uh, something that we emphasize to educators. Um, one way to get started is with mini lessons that are less than 30 minutes. They're hands-on projects with using simple materials that will get you used to teaching STEAM and also your students um, used to all of the different types of materials that are available. Uh, we encourage educators to let students um, go in, in whatever direction they want to take their project. Lots of times students will ask you, will this work in this way? And, and a lot, we don't know the answer. None of us know the answer, but just let the student explore and figure it out for themselves. Um, that's part of what STEAM is about. Uh, supplies are very important. Lots of supplies you should keep in your classroom, um, library, or after school space in case the student has an idea and you can always have a bin of materials that they can use. Um, another option is to use kits and lots of times kits involve electronics or other materials that make it easy for your students to create projects. Lots of educators think that STEAM is for high school students or maybe middle school. When people think STEAM, they think robotics competitions or complicated projects that are big and, and that take 10 weeks to, to finish or have to be done in a team competition. And, and that's not true. You can get started with younger kids, and elementary school is perfect to do that. Kids want to take risks, they're excited, um, they, they want to make things, and especially if they get to take it home, that's very excited, so that they can share with their families. So teachers sometimes say that they can't get started teaching STEAM because there's not enough time. The solution is to integrate. STEAM subjects are becoming really important in the classroom because STEAM careers are becoming more and more in high demand. So it's really important that we find a way to teach STEAM concepts, even if it's maybe not one of our main subjects. Even if you only teach one subject, integration provides a higher platform for students to explore topics. Say you're learning about early American settlers. Students can study the art from that period to evaluate how the style of the pieces reflect what students know about the time period. It's important to provide an opportunity to reflect on learning in STEAM lessons, especially if you're integrating. This will help students gather their thoughts in an integrated les lesson to make connections better. Integrating with STEAM provides a great opportunity for students to learn the skills of reflection and synthesis. These skills are important in every subject. These are just things that I've discovered in the classroom as far as integrating lessons, but these can apply to all kinds of educators in and out of the classroom. You can integrate as an after-school educator or a parent as well. So these are some types of STEAM projects. STEAM lessons are really diverse, but more commonly we think of STEAM activities as being more active and student-centered. These three types of lessons provide a high level of engagement and are research-based ways to teach STEAM sub subjects. Hands-on projects are easiest to begin with. They can be very short and simple, and they're great for classroom or after-school type settings. Inquiry-based lessons are potentially the most involved and require some planning, but there is a high payoff in changing the way you and your students relate to learning. 
Inquiry lessons prepare students for STEAM careers by teaching them how to think and solve problems. The teacher pushes the students to discover information and acts as a guide to question thinking rather than standing up at the front telling students how things work. The really important thing that teachers can provide in inquiry lessons is making sure students aren't forming misconceptions about how STEAM things work. So how things in science work or how, um, you know, how math problems are solved. Teachers act as a guide to make sure that students are on the right track. Lastly, we have process-based lessons. What we mean here is just that students use a process to solve a problem. So the most common process that teachers use in the classroom is the scientific method, but you can use engineering processes, processes to evaluate art, processes to solve math problems. These create a routine for STEAM lessons and kind of mimic how STEAM subjects are done in the real world. Uh, so, STEAM requires materials and supplies for hands-on projects, but the good news is that you may already have them or can easily get the supplies that you need. Um, lots of times, in if you're at a school, there's construction paper, pipe cleaners, um, containers and cups that you can use for different types of projects, or you can easily go to a store and buy them. Um, other ways of getting materials is asking your students to bring in you know recycled materials like for example a cereal box a container uh, anything that they may have available at home you can just have them bring in their own and then they can make a project with it um, we usually like to keep uh, some basics in in our space like popsicle sticks magnets batteries uh, duct tape different types of containers just anything that can be made into a, a project and lots of times people will donate to us um, these, pro these, these materials or once people know that you're doing STEAM projects they'll think of you and, and want to donate these materials to you or collect them for you. Um, but you could also take advantage of some online platforms like if you're a classroom teacher there's Donors Choose, um, other crowdfunding platforms where you could raise to buy something, especially if you're buying a kit or anything that's a little bit more expensive and may not be available in your community. And that's not all. We have some extra tips for you. One of the questions we get really frequently is how to get more girls engaged in STEAM. And, you know, there's uh, different ways. I mean, all girls are different, but I think that, you know, where we find is most successful is when you really appeal to girls' interests and then you uh, pair, pair the science, engineering, whatnot um, to that interest. So one example that's fantastic is fashion technology um, where you know, girls can apply electronics to their clothing, to their backpack, to their notebook. Uh, so really look, talk to the girls that you're working with, find out what they're into at that given time and then I'm sure that you can find some really interesting projects uh, to incorporate. Uh, safety, safety, safety first. Uh, there, when you're thinking about electronics, you're probably thinking, you know, <clears throat> electricity and that can be dangerous. So um, there are a lot of great resources um, to understand how to make your environment safe. At uh, KitHub, we have a take-apart electronics kit that includes some safety precautions. Uh, a great resource are your lo local maker spaces, hacker spaces, and community meetups. Uh, if you go to meetup.com, you'll find some wonderful local groups that get together and may work on projects ranging from you know, various citizen science uh, initiatives, uh, bioengineering, or even building rocket ships. Resources that we really uh, like at GitHub include Maker Ed, which has came out with a guide on how to set up uh, maker type spaces. Um, we go to instructables.com for a lot of project ideas that are crowdsourced from the community. If you Google uh, making or DIY, I'm sure you'll come up with lots of great resources or go to github.cc and we have some for you there. If you're worried about the cost of incorporating STEAM into your classroom or after school setting. Um, some things to think about. One is that these projects really don't have to be expensive. You know, when you think about 
electronics, you might think robots, you know, Arduino, and these things can definitely cost a lot of money, but, you know, when you're in, starting with steam, think about keeping things simple. So ki kids, when they light up an LED for the first time, are delighted. Their faces literally light up. And that's just an LED and a coin cell battery. Um, if you do need some funding, there are resources like Donors Choose or um, various education grants, or if you're in a classroom setting, go to your uh, parents' association, and I'm sure they would be happy to help you out. Last, you know, we hear from educators that are concerned that they don't have a background in you know, science or engineering, and they are concerned that they're not the right person to facilitate these projects. And to you, we say, that is not correct. You can do it, absolutely. Here at KitHub, that is our mission, is really to empower parents and educators to bring STEAM to the kids in their lives. And we know that you'll have just as much fun as the kids. So thank you so much for joining us uh, during this at this video. And if you head over to khub.cc, you'll find more resources and more of our videos. And before we uh, stop this video, we wanted to say hello, I'm Tara. Hello. hello. I'm Rebecca. And please feel free to add comments. And if you have any questions or want to add to the conversation, we would be delighted to hear from you. Uh, feel free to email us at hello at kithub.cc or we're on Twitter at kithub. And we hope to see you soon. Bye.